Maybe it's just a matter of like replugging this in. And this is controlling everything. All of it. So I didn't see these lines flex. I saw oh. this flex. But one time this moved. So we're trying to hook up a new dozer blade from Ironcraft. And it's going to be using auxiliary hydraulics controlled by the 14 pin connection. And it was easy to figure out, well, easier. It did take us a little bit to figure out on the 333G. Um, I don't remember, that was a while ago, like two years ago, probably for the. That was one summer ago. Even been for the. Oh, yeah, that was one summer ago. For yeah. The Roto, the Reese Roto Rake. Yeah, we had to use it for that. Um, figure that out. And the instruction manual, that big honking thing that's 200 plus pages, yeah. Chris and I have both looked through it. And there is no reference that either of us can find anywhere in there to how to control the electrical side of this system. They so how you control this, they cover this, they cover this, they skip this. Yeah. That's our electrical connection, which is like a 11 pin connection, but we only have, we have a positive and a negative, that's it. Anyway, so there's a bunch of buttons in here basically, and I'm sure there's a sequence that you push them to get it to operate. and. As you can see, it worked one time yesterday when I was trying to figure this all out because it's sitting cockeyed. Uh, randomly, I was pushing buttons and it and it went from being perfectly level to being cockeyed. It'll it'll angle left and right fine with a normal third function operation, but it's that second operation where you have to use the additional auxiliaries controlled through the electric to get it to to tilt left and right as well. And that's why we're confident that it's not a pin that's blocking it from rotating because you already got it to rotate. So, so anyway, we'll show you the controls that he's using. We'll show you, you know, option, optional sequences that we've done. Um, and we're hoping by the end of this video, we've shown you what works. Well, and conveniently, um, one of the reps for Michigan randomly, just totally randomly sent me a text that he just got the first electric JCB unit in the state of Michigan. And so I was thinking, well, wow, that's good timing. So I asked if he has anybody in technical support that we can talk to on how to make this work. So maybe we'll get a phone call or have somebody to talk to and uh, see if we can get this going. Okay, so typically you have to turn that auxiliary lock off and then we can angle. This would open and close the jaws of the grapple. I mean, it's the same thing. That works normal left and right. So now we need to figure out how to switch the hydraulics over through the 14 pin electrical connection and do the tilt. And this is where I'm struggling. We have other auxiliary levers here. Push them and hold them for a little bit of time just to see if there's hydraulic oil that has to cycle through. Nothing happens. What's this one? That's not, that's slow, that's snail something. So if we hit that auxiliary button right here on the control, it does something. And I don't know what. And you can press every other toggle while that's activated and it doesn't do it. It cycles flow, you can see it, it told flow to go through there with this button, not this one though. All right. I'm gonna hold it down for like five seconds to see what happens. See if like oil's gotta get through there or something. You've got auxiliary on the back side of that too. The right joystick. Yeah, I'm pushing the back one down. It's hot though, I'll tell you that. Nothing, if I go back to this one, this one doesn't work now either with uh... So I wonder if I... Nope. So if I push, if, if I push this again though, it gets it back out of that mode and goes back to this. If I push auxiliary, I, that doesn't work anymore. So that's doing something. I didn't see any other electrical... Uh, so I looked it up. This is... Uh, Unlock, lock, well, reverse fan, high, reverse fan, high flow, or something high like that. flow. These are your control. Iso H pattern. This is something I forget. But. And then over here you have other just bucket loader stuff. Lockouts of the, the joystick lights. It's lights. Yeah. And auxiliaries. But where's like? It's an auxiliary lock. 
emergency electric, though, you know? There's no indication. They're just basically treating it like auxiliary. Now, the only AUGS button that looks different is that. This is here. Yeah, but that's the one that just sends it all the way over. In hindsight, I should have just had uh, Ironcraft send me another electrical, or uh, another hydraulic hose. Whoa. I, they got that, but. Yeah. It should work, though. Yeah, what's the, what's the pin for if you can't use it, you know? It's so weird. Something to do with this auxiliary button? Or, I, don't, I don't, I feel like you shouldn't have to press a single thing. It should just be automatically one of the other aux buttons. So you have the green light on, is that correct? No, it's off. Green light off. We've never successfully used the electrical port on here, right? We never tried it. Uh, no, never had a need to. So this this is uh, another connection that's just like hard to reach. You see this right here? Yeah. And it's just like if that's loose, yeah, there's no part right here either to get your hand in there. That's pretty solid. The hydraulics are working, but this needs to tell the hydraulics to go someplace else. And it so did. At, it did at one point. I know, and I, I I understand that, and I don't. Maybe the maybe the solenoid worked once. <laughs> You see that? This makes it want to twitch. So I put it all the way to one side, right? This is just, I'm using this toggle now, and it's going to twitch. Like it's wanting to go there. Yeah. But it doesn't do it again. Yeah. I have when to, you hit the top? Yeah. Well, yeah, no. I was doing it when I hit the bottom. Well, no, bottom one. Bottom is what I was, yeah. I was but doing like, that. I have to go all the way, I have to complete this circuit. And then I do it. Or maybe I just have to move it and then do it. I think it's only when I complete it. Then it twitches a little bit. Yeah. But not, not any other time. Like I'm pressing it, it doesn't twitch. So if I go all the way to the other side. There it is again. Just yeah, a little. Doing, yeah, I was doing that so before. So that feels like it's the right uh, thing. But. Yeah, I know. Crank the throttle up and hold it, hold it down for a while. Just to get more flow going through it. Yeah. continue to hold this this toggle that I just moved it with and now I, as long as I don't let go of it I can at least do that no there's no there's no success this doesn't make sense so I'm holding I'm holding the left toggle all the way now I'm going to activate it to go up and it doesn't doesn't even work now no oh, no down is the only way Anytime it's open, You're I'm down. overriding it. So anytime this one's open, if I run this one at the same time, it's diverting. So I have to open it, you have and to then use, I can control it. You have to use the third function, and then to engage the flow. It stops. You can see it stops swiveling. Or, uh, uh, and angling. then you use the other one, and it diverts the flow. Well, actually, let me just do this. Let me press this first, and then run it. Yep. Okay. That is a terrible way to do it. That is absolutely asinine. Wow. Okay. But we got it. And let me put her down nice and level, YouTube. It's not level yet. And I'm just going to tell you. You were just saying how dumb you were. That's how you earn your paycheck at Gilbert's Tractors right there. Yeah. All right, you got to turn off the parking brake, turn off the auxiliary lock. 
And so then, let's see, we're going to push down our, what we want to tilt, left or right. I'm gonna push that down, and then you're gonna use your third function, one way or the other. That works really smooth. Let me go back here and do it. Man, they could have really helped me out in the manual making that easier. Works just like it should. I do think part of that always with these new attachments with the cylinders on them, you gotta have hydraulic fluid filling the cylinder and the hoses. So then, that's just regular angle. I take my hand off of this side, regular third function, push down the, the extra auxiliary for tilt, and then use my third function to make those adjustments. I mean, it works fine. You just gotta know how to do it, and that was, for simpletons like us, way too complicated. We are proud to be sponsored by RimGuard Solutions, a liquid ballast weight. It goes right inside your tires, completely hidden. We're big on safety on this channel. These tractors are just too light and tippy right out of the factory. Not only is it gonna help with safety, keeping those rear tires planted on the ground, it helps with loader efficiency and traction too. The benefits of rim guard include being the heaviest all natural liquid ballast weight on the market. It's not gonna corrode your rims like the old calcium chloride. It's not gonna freeze and it's available at over a thousand dealers nationwide. Find the dealer near you at rimguardsolutions.com. I looked up online, there's no customer service number for them. The information is not in the manual that we could find anywhere. But we did it. We got we just updated your manual JCB with this yeah. video. Pro tips for operating JCB. I mean, they, this one company you'll see we put it up there. Weldco JCB. Whether they're I, I don't have to they're just a dealer. They have an hour-long video on controls in there, um, nonstop running through every control. And granted, I, I'm skipping through it, so maybe I did miss it, but. I didn't see him say you have to control two <laughs> switches nope. at once to control one function. Well, he actually has two videos because he's got an older one well, and then a newer one. I watched the older one, he watched the newer one. The older one just says on the buttons that we were using, these are for other functions if your attachments have it. And I'm not knocking this guy because it was a good, no, a good video. No, he put out a helpful video, but he's probably never had to, well, maybe he never connected an electrical thing because you would cover that. I mean, it's just. I'm really know. glad we made this a video because that's all you JCB owners. Good luck figuring that out. Maybe if you run skid steer, I, your, your um, 333G didn't do anything like that. No. You had to run, you had to hold a button, a toggle button, not oh. even an AUGS button. Well, let me show you, because I was telling you, uh, we've got the JCB uh, payloader too, how to disconnect the skid steer quick attach on that is you have to use two hands and two buttons to hold that. Let me, let me show you that really quick. So now, this is how it works, really nice how to disconnect attachments from the loader on the Skister Quick Attach here. It's, it's, it's hydraulic and it's got a red indicator on there so you can see the indicator goes up and down, it goes up when you're releasing, it'll go back down when you're connecting. And you just push a button up here, that's to disconnect and you hold it down, you push a button down here and hold it uh, to reconnect. So we're going to unlock. disconnect you'll see this uh, that red pin going up you see that and then we're just going to reconnect push it down super awesome absolutely love that I want to show you how you do it on the payloader now and hopefully I can remember because it was a bit of a little sequence like that too we got to push two different things <sighs> awkward now these two machines were just about the same price the loader and the skid steer both over a hundred grand. On here, on the same brand, same brand new model year everything machine, there's no indicator on here because for some reason, I don't know. There is no good reason. Why is there not an indicator on here? So you're just guessing. Which one was it? I think I've got to push up on this and then hold it down and then I'm going to use my third function. So I push up, hold that down, and then I hold this up here like this and I believe it's disconnected. Nope. Maybe I got to hold it down. And as far as I can tell, I can't get this to lock like just down like that. I've got to hold it up. It doesn't stay, I can't get it to stay locked down. 
So maybe it was down. Maybe I had to push it down like this. Or I might even have to take that out of park. I don't know. Let's see if that did it. Yeah, that did it. So now it's disconnected. And then to reconnect, of course, lock it back in, rock it back. So it's seated on there good. And then you reverse that process of holding this thing down somehow and then using your other hand over here. I do not understand why it's not the same as the teleskid. Okay, so we should be locked back in. You have no visual indicator. See if it falls off. Do I see? I can see my... Uh, yeah, I can see it. You know, the whatever they're called for the SSQA, the spikes sticking down through there. So it's on there. But why are these machines that are the same brand, the same model year, the same quick attach style, completely different? I don't know. Well, that's stupid. Well, the mystery is solved. So a little bit of behind the scenes stuff going on, but now you know if you have a JCB on uh, how to operate that extra control. We were gonna tell you about the Ironcraft dozer blade. We'll have to do that in another video now. So make sure you come back for that because we'll tell you all about how to use this, different sizes, all the different features and whatnot. If you're looking for an attachment for your tractor or your skid steer, we'd love to help you out. Go to goodworkstractors.com. We sell and ship all over the country every day of the week. If you enjoyed today's video, we'd love to have you tag along. Hit that subscribe button right down below. I wanna thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by. And until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.